Kelsey right here with South by Southwest. Join me on the red carpet for the premiere of The Uninvited. Tell me a little bit about your character in the film. I play Rose, who is a former actress and mom living in Hollywood, married to a big Hollywood agent who's sort of uh, melting down uh, in her life, is in a bit of a crisis. And um, it's it's a really interesting movie because it takes place over the course of one night and it's a, a big party, like a big Hollywood party in my house that I'm throwing. And so everything goes wrong, of course, and it's very fun. Nice, I dig it. Um, to, what was it about the script in the film that made you want to get involved with it? I really loved the writing. Nadia Connors wrote it, and I loved that it was about a woman experiencing what it's like to be aging in Hollywood, because I'm a woman who's experiencing what it's like to be aging in Hollywood, and I thought it was pretty accurate. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you so much for talking to us. I look forward to seeing the film. Thanks. I'm with Nadia Connors, writer and director of The Uninvited. What made you want to premiere your film at South by Southwest? Well, for me, for I, I really think this is a true independent film. And we made it with very little money, very little time, with an incredible group of actors. And every single part of this film was like independently crafted. And to me, South by represents like the artist, filmmaker's place with an incredible audience to really embrace your film for what it is. And so I was extremely excited. This was our favorite outcome and we got in. So <laughs> that makes me so excited. You have a documentary film background. Yes. Do you think that your documentary style of filmmaking influenced how you made this film in any way? My documentary background didn't influence the filmmaking style, but the subject matters have always influenced me, and I was an environmental filmmaker for a long time. And while this is set in like the frothy, superficial world of Hollywood, what I'm really doing is a veiled critique of a society that values these things over something more abiding and sustaining. And so it's a real twin idea to the ecological catastrophe film, you know? And in so many ways, I look at these people like they are, so that's my husband, by the way. <laughs> he plays the husband in the movie, so it's perfect. Um, anyway, but um, no, the, the, there's, a, there's a critique in both of those ways, and I think documentary filmmaking made me sort of always look at themes and research things in that way. And that's the one thing that I really hope people know going into this movie is that every single shot, every single frame, and every single moment in this film has some triple layered critique of the society that I'm depicting. Love that. Sounds juicy, frankly. <laughs> if you're like a literary, like, you know, it's like juicy for some. <laughs> Not quite the thriller, but you know. Yeah. What initially inspired you to write and tell this story? Well, main, I, it's really about the experience of being a woman at midlife. And so it's, it's about juggling motherhood and selfhood and how a lot of women that I know take a step back from their careers when they become mothers. And in my generation, we became mothers much later because we were told that it was a choice. Like, you do this or you do this. And what a lot of my compatriots have discovered is that what happens when you become a mom in midlife is that you take a step out of a world that you've created for yourself and it's really hard to come back to it, you know? And there's no integration between those two halves of yourself. And so I was inspired and thinking about that subject when in real life, an elderly woman showed up at my house thinking that she had returned home. And that's the central inciting incident in this movie is that a woman shows up lost thinking this is her home and it's the way in which this real story affected me at that particular moment in my life while I was beginning to write something about it and it just all came together as this sort of universal female journey you know whether you're 25 or literally like the actress who plays the elderly woman 93 you're always struggling with the inside and the outside and and the roles that you have to perform well, that is poignant, and I love that it's definitely real life inspired. I really look forward to seeing this film. Thank you so much for talking thank to you, us. Thank you. I'm with Walton Goggins, cast of The Uninvited. This is not your first South by Southwest. 
No, no, no. It's it's. I I think my third or fourth South by. I um, was here with I am Virgo. I think we did uh, we did vice principals here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if we did the righteous gemstones, but we did vice principals here. Yeah. What do you love most? I think my my partner and I we made we made a few films, and I, I think we may have been here for one of them too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love this town. I felt Robert Rodriguez is an old friend of mine, and uh, I've filmed here a, a few times over the years, and spent a lot of time here. It's one of my favorite cities in America. Why do you like bringing your films to South by Southwest? Well, I think like any filmmaker, you know, it's a, it's a rocking good time. Full uh, the hospitality. I'm Southern, you know, and uh, and the open arms in which this festival supports and welcomes filmmakers. Um, it's a, just a, the pressure is off and it just allows for creativity and a really good time. And it's become one of the most important festivals in America. Thank you for saying that. <laughs> well, it's true. You know, it, it is. It's true. Whenever you, you get into South by Southwest, it's a real badge of honor, you know. And so uh, I'm just happy to see what it's become over all these years. So the writer-director is your wife. Really? Yeah, yes, she is. She's my wife. <laughs> what was it like collaborating with her? Well, I was afraid she was going to edit me out of the movie. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, it was, uh, you know, it was daunting at first, to be quite honest with you, because I, I genuinely didn't want to let her down. Uh, and, I, and I thought it would be better if I just kind of stayed in the background. But as timing kind of worked out, um, uh, she said, no, I, I really want you to, to play this role. And, and uh, so I stepped in there, and, uh, and, I, and I'm, I'm proud of it. I'm proud of her. You know, there was a, there's a, as someone who's been around for a while and worked with a number of first-time directors, even though my wife has done a, a big documentary with Leonardo and things like that, but this is her first narrative fiction. Um, you're able as, a, as an actor to anticipate problems before they happen, and you want to help your, your director out, right? Kind of make these suggestions. But there's a line, you know, that you know is there, and you don't want to cross that line. Well, it's different when the director is your wife. <laughs> the line is very different, right? And so it was just a a matter of kind of trial and error and how we kind of communicate and uh, not wanting to step on her toes and not wanting my toes stepped on, right? So we survived and ultimately uh, it, it brought us even closer, if that's even possible. And uh, she's my best friend and I've had the luxury of reading her writing for 19 years. And so, you know, we got one over the finish line and, and, uh, and it says something. It does say something. It says something to be a united front and be able to collaborate with your spouse and come out on the other side stronger. Yeah, that's right. And, and the movie itself says something. You know, it lands in a very meaningful way. Thank you so much for talking to us. First of all, congratulations to all on your world premiere. Thank you so much for bringing the film to South by Southwest. Nadia, let's start with you, and please tell us about your writing process, the inspiration for this film, and how it came to be on screen. Well, um, uh, we had a real incident in our life where we were getting ready for a party one night when an elderly woman showed up at our house um, thinking it was her home. And the, well, the real Helen, um, I managed to get her home much more quickly. It stayed with me because I returned to the party that we were having and I kept thinking about her and I kept trying to penetrate sort of our house guests with this sort of desperation that I felt for this very lost, lonely woman who basically outlived anyone in her life and she belonged to no one. And in that brief moment, I felt like she belonged to me and I belonged to her. And to have just this one point of contact where she touched my hand and it just stayed with me and rattled me and I happened to be at a time in my life where I was a, a mother for the first time and I was really struggling with who I was as a woman, as a woman in the world, as a working woman and then as a mother at home and the division of labor with my husband and feeling very much like the house had started to become or kind of a cage that I was disappearing into. And so between her lostness and my lostness, these two things sort of dovetailed and I started to write a story wherein I could explore not only that sort of universal experience of women in our culture, where, and that's why there's three women from the different ages, you have 25, 45, 
almost 95, but not quite. But, um, and, um, and this sort of universal urge and struggle to find where you belong in the world and how to integrate those halves of yourself. So that was the main inspiration you know, for the film. Fantastic. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, the first telling and how it was a play at first and how that translated onto screen? Well, it seemed really perfect for a play, and, and uh, especially because I kept imagining this elderly woman sitting in the living room waiting for someone to come and get her while the world moved on without her outside. And so the whole play, when I wrote it, took place in the living room, and the claustrophobia was quite intense because you never got out of the living room, you never got to the party at all. And then co and we were developing it as a play, and we had a lot of support, and we had closed door rehearsals and stuff like that, and, and um, then COVID happened, and it became clear that it was gonna be quite a long time before theaters reopened, and I started to reconsider it as a movie, and in many ways, one of the comments that I got from a lot of people was that it felt like an intimate play. And what was true was that whenever I was in a scene, writing a scene, I wasn't out there looking at them on a stage. I was much closer up to these characters. And so when I did think of it and reconceive it as a film, I opened it up a little bit to different rooms in the house, but the framing, if you notice, is all very sort of using the house as like a stage. And you know whether it's an alcove or the stairwell or the whole set of the kitchen or the bathroom, these are all tiny stages for mini plays. And the way in which like we did a lot of two shots and one of the reasons I was so excited to work with Elizabeth and Lois was that they have such extensive uh, uh, experience in theater and they were able to sort of run it like, like, like a play in many ways. And so that was you know a huge part of it, yeah. I'd love to hear a little bit about uh, coming into your parts for especially some of the women in the cast. Those are very dynamic roles for women. How did you all talk with Nadia about how you wanted to, to bring those to life? Thank you. I was very taken with the idea of playing a sort of failed, failing actress. <laughs> <laughs> of a certain age. Um, I thought that was relevant. Um, it, it resonated with me, and I, was, I thought it was very funny, and smart, and sad, and, um, and I was very moved by the idea of becoming so invested that, that, that with this person that comes into my house, and how much she matters. And um, I was really moved by that just watching it. So congratulations. Well, thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> I'm, just like, I, I'm moved by myself. That's, <laughs> that's embarrassing. Um, anyway, but I just was blown away by everyone's performances. So I, I'm sort of the first time I'm really seeing it. So uh, I, that was great, you guys. Um, and anyway, but that, I, I think I, did I answer? Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's some kind of, the film touches on some themes around culture for women, and so I wanted to know if that was a dialogue that you had with the director. Oh yeah, we talked about that a lot, and we talked about betrayal, and patriarchy, and um, not like a TED talk or anything, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> although I'm happy to get into that <laughs> if, we, if we'd like to have one right now, no. Oh, but I just, it was, it was interesting, it was, all, it was all just written, it was, it was woven into the script, and I think it felt very real for me. Yeah, and I do like that sort of line at the beginning where Rose doesn't get this part because it felt tragic, and it was really <laughs> to play the person that she was. Yeah, the mother you know, of a six-year-old. Yeah, yeah the, felt you can, so old that it, it felt, felt tragic. tragic. <laughs> yeah, and um, yeah, I think that, you know, when I wrote the play, I was considering a lot of different settings. I always knew that they were gonna be of a certain socioeconomic class, but it could be publishing, or it could be theater, or it could be politics, and I thought about them all. And I said it in Hollywood because Hollywood is the culture industry, and there is you know, a lot to answer for in the ways in which women have to you know, stay young. It's obviously in a, a city that's obsessed with youth, and you see the Pedro character gets another shot at playing a role 25 years later or 20 years later that is recast 
with Ava, who's the new Rose, you know, and she has the new child and the new relationship and the new, she gets, you know, you don't get the second chance, yeah. he gets the second chance. And so I think that there's a lot to do with that, but also um, the power of this, the, the culture industry in, in this is how we're telling stories. And, and I, I've spoken about this before, I'm, I'm half Egyptian and half American and I grew up going back and forth between the two cultures and one is obviously a much more religious culture and this is a secular culture. And what that means to me is just the way in which we're prepared to create meaning. <laughs> Somebody doesn't like that idea. <laughs> Look it right out, like cut. <laughs> no, but, um, and so they're all storytellers, you know, and you know, Rose is telling a story to her child because she needs to create meaning, and which is another additional burden of, of the mother in this sort of post-feminist, post-religious, post-post, but super capitalist West, where you have to, you're responsible for the good and the bad, for what's the right story, what's the wrong story, you know? But then the, the, the men are outside telling the big stories that matter, which is the billion dollar story, you know? And you have an audience of one, and they have a, audi a much bigger audience. And so, it, you know, it uses all of those things, and, and that's the other reason why I said it in Hollywood, was to think about the stories that were, that were because they are becoming the new myths, like the cocaine-infused Rufus Sewell. You know, it's like, I am God, you know? And in a way, he is God, you know? Because he is creating the story that becomes our main story. So with all of that, you know, so that's why it was in Hollywood and that's, you know. For some of our other cast members that are here with us, was there anything that you kind of used it from um, personal experience to kind of tap into these characters and, and how, did, how did you come into the ensemble knowing that it was so kind of delicately put together? I, I think this is when uh, the man needs to be quiet and just <laughs> listen, right? Uh, you want to jump in there, Ava? Yeah. I, I, I yeah. Do, yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. so actually, when I first read the script, and I said this before to Nadia, um, what hit close to home is the loneliness and, and the fears that Rose faces with her motherhood in Hollywood, because as soon as I arrived to Hollywood, I got pregnant, and that is not what you do when you arrive to Hollywood to start a career. You just don't get pregnant. And I did, and, and it's interesting to, to, to notice how people in the industry react to that, right? Like they, how a pregnancy can scare people. And so I started auditioning right away because I wanted to prove the world I could still um, function right and i would go to uh, to auditions with my pumping machine i would pump in the restrooms while reading my lines and so as soon as i read the script i cried because i needed this movie i needed to play this character and i think that if i hadn't had all those experiences i wouldn't have understood the the script in the same way and and i wouldn't have felt connected in that way so thank you nadia Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, out of the direction. <laughs> no, you know, I'll just say this really quickly. Uh, uh, I, I've had the luxury of reading my wife's writing for 19 years, and uh, there is no bigger fan than, than, than me. And uh, when we talked about my participation kind of in this, I, I, I didn't want to do it because I didn't want to let you down, you know? Like, I was afraid that I wasn't kind of up to the task. And, uh, but ultimately, uh, to participate in a story that, it, to me, it's called The Uninvited, but it really is an invitation, you know, to, um, to live your life in a more meaningful way. And, and that was kind of my takeaway uh, at the end of all of it, and uh, get the opportunity to work with all you wonderful ladies. It's uh, what a pleasure. Uh, Lois, did you want to share anything about your experience? For me, of course, at the beginning, the, the part was so complicated and 
therefore attractive. <laughs> and, um, I think coming in as the intruder into this already fraught uh, evening and marriage, um, I, w I always wanted to know how those stories really, what came of it. This was also <clears throat> really my first time seeing the film, and I am still puzzling over and answering that question, and very eager to know what all the people who see the film, how they answer that question. Yeah. Um. I just want to, I just want to add that Lois and I played the same character many years ago, yes. <laughs> yeah, in a movie, and it was really incredible to get to be in scenes with you um, after all these years, uh, and I was just so moved that I got to work with you. It so. was a treat that that happened. Yes, we, we of course were never together on screen before because uh, we were playing different ages of the same person. This time, and we got to work together. Yeah. It's a pleasure. Thank you. You got both. You want to leave? Yeah, we'll take <laughs> one more. Yeah. Any Should final, we open? Yeah, final, yeah, final thoughts? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm just so grateful. Thank you so much for, for being here, for watching the movie. And I you know, would love to, if, you, if anyone has any questions, open it up to the audience. I think we have time for maybe one or two questions. We do have to turn the house over um, for the next screening, but uh, yes. What advice do you have for aspiring The question was about advice for aspiring film creators. You want to go, Rosie? Whoa. <laughs> Make a film. <laughs> yeah. uh, just, do, just do it. Get a good story. Find somebody who can, get a, who can write a good story. Pick up the phone and, and pull in everything you can and make it. Just go for it. I mean, I would also say that it's, it's a really complicated industry intersecting with art. So you can lose yourself and try and, you know, write something to get a job, which is super important. Write something to get experience. It depends what area of the film world that you want to be in. You know, and, and I think all of those experiences are extremely important. And something that was said to me a long, long time ago is just keep working. <laughs> like, hopefully the mic would keep working. Yes. <laughs> all right. Um, Hello. Oh, it's back. Did you want to no, 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 that's that? good. I got the hint. <laughs> Bettina, okay. Bettina last, has a Last question, question here. First of all, that's Elizabeth. my friend, so <laughs> her, she's, thank you. Um, I, I do love doing comedy because I think privately, I mean, what, there's no greater joy than making people laugh. Um, but yeah, I, I, you know, I don't, I don't get to do it very often, so thank you. You were very funny. <laughs> thank you. Well, you wrote it. <laughs> Um, I would like to remind everyone, there's a QR code up on the screen. This film is eligible for an audience award, Yay! so please vote. Yes, there's also QR codes out in the lobby. Thank you so much to our entire group of filmmakers here. Congratulations on your world premiere. We hope everybody has a really great week. Thank you. That does it for the premiere of The Uninvited. Stay tuned for more coverage throughout the week.